Yeah, All right. Sorry. That brings us to Shogun episode nine. Um, the second to the last episode, Crimson Sky, uh, and the synopsis on IMDb reads, Mariko arrives at Osaka for the fight of her life. Blackthorn and Yabushige scramble to save their own heads as their options dwindle. Will, what did you think about this episode? Wow. So I know last week I, I was like, said that as of that moment, episode eight, it was my favorite episode, but uh, this episode... Probably <laughs> next week. I'll probably say next week's gonna be my favorite. But this one really was one that just one of those things that when you watch Anna Soai's performance as Mariko, you're just like, okay, give her the hardware. I mean, it was a a real defining performance that she uh, gave in this episode. As far as the episode itself, um, I really did like it a lot. Uh, one of the things I thought about was. Something we talked about, maybe it was episode five, or I think was that the one where we see Lady Oshiba coming back to uh, Osaka Castle? I think so. And, yeah. And we were, you know, one of the things I had noted was you know, these were the two pow- powerful women in Japan. And I can't, I thought about that again watching this episode. Uh, and, and the sense of power, you know, there's the belt, there's the hard exercise of power and then something Anna so uh, mentioned in an interview uh, that I was reading about right literally right before we uh, recorded tonight about uh, how sometimes it's just that quiet power that that inner power that uh, a person has and I'm paraphrasing but I, I thought about our conversation where we had that and that really was on display in this in this episode with Mariko uh, she's we you know we definitely get more context as far as her backstory you know with the flashback uh we see uh, we learn really how what tornaga had in store for for his with his plan as far as how he was going to utilize her and um and you know and 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 also just how she and we've seen this throughout her straddling her role as a samurai as well as her, her Christian faith and how all that sort of was sort of a guiding post and, and, and that, and again, just the uh, eightfold fence coming up again. Uh, it was just so many things that, you know, what a good penultimate episode does is pull all these things that we've seen throughout the season, bring all those storylines together into to one big moment. And, and that did happen in this episode. Are you, so I've brought this up to you before. Um, yeah. And so after this episode, do you th- still think it's only going to be one season? Yes. Okay. I do. Yeah, I mean, there's no, I mean, unless, oh, I mean, because this is inspired by real events. So, yeah, could they do a second season going into the next phase of Japan's history? Yeah, they could. But at least with this story and, and this period in Japan's feudal past, yeah, um, this story will it will we will conc- it will conclude with next week's episode. Interesting. Okay. They could they if the if FX is like well we're, we're really killing it with the numbers and they like force a, a second season but again it will be a, a a new story. It wouldn't be this one. This this story is contained to this. Yeah. 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 What were your thoughts of the episode? It it was good. I mean, yeah. what else am I gonna say? Um, yeah, so we get a brief flashback about Mariko 14 years earlier. She tries to escape while pregnant. That's when she meets Father Alvito, who seriously has a crush on her (laughs) and has had one for 14 years. And he gives her the cross and that guides her. So that's the only flashback um, in this episode. This is is Mariko very heavy episode. Um. Because it and it starts with her and it ends with her as um, um, so the Toronaga's plan with Mariko was to send her to Osaka to um, to pick essentially pick up his his ladies, his ladies Mm -hmm. um, and bring them back to where he is Um, and basically calling the bluff that um, Ishido and Ochiba are holding 
all of the noble um, families hostage in Osaka right now and 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 calling that bluff. And so everything escalates and Mariko refuses to not be allowed to return to her 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 lord um, as is her mission. We were wondering what Tornaga was really up to. I mean, that's sort of been like, you know, I think you know, whenever we've talked about this this show and figuring out what his overall big picture plans and, and what was Mar- – because I think as we left things kind of la- in the last week, we, we were wondering was, was Mara goes on the on the journey. Yeah, and, and, of course, Tornaga smartly doesn't tell Blackthorn or Yabashige, like, what is what is tr- true mission or true, true aim is here. And and it really does base you know basically it forces like Ashido's ha- hand uh, as far as what his what his true thing is there because I mean if 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 everybody's truly a prisoner then he if everybody's truly guest then people can come and go and she's like and that's what she did she's like look you know I, I we're rolling out of here. And, and he's like, but wait a minute, you don't have a permit, all that kind of stuff. Whenever you know, whenever I had that moment there in the, and whenever they have the audience there in the, in the regents chamber and stuff. So, what was really interesting too about that regents scene was where how he was just kind of talking down to Marco, which is very interesting given their 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 stations because I mean she is samurai class, whereas he was a peasant who just worked his way up was lucky enough to work his way up to being a being a regent and stuff so you know it was really interesting just sort of seeing sort of that that how she dealt with that uh those you know basically insults given that really you know she you know she comes from a you know higher higher class in, in their society and stuff so i mean it was i was i was just really just edge of my seat really just enjoying this sort of watching all this all this stuff play out so so yeah she, she they they have that standoff and then she tries to leave she fails to leave and and then she decide then she says okay because i cannot return to my lord i'm gonna commit suicide um and kill myself and and the whole ceremony that we've seen before now a few times play out and um but then Ishido decides to say, okay, no, here are your permits. And um, and then so she's allowed to leave. They And then the, Yabashige, because while this is going on with Mariko, in the background, there's, there's an offer where Yabashige has to, in order to make amends with Ishido, he has to let some assassins into Osaka and they're after Mariko. And then she sacrifices herself. If she's dead, I, I strongly believe she is. Um, I think it'll be very strange if she's alive in the last episode, but stranger uh, things have happened. Mm-mm. She's dead. I mean, that's, I mean, I, I mean, again, these are all inspired by true events. I mean, this is where, I mean, the her her true life counterpart also um, died. did die, uh, in a, and and also in the original source material. I mean, pretty much the this show stayed stayed true to the source material. But the only difference, is my understanding, is uh, in the in this version, she uses her her father's surname versus in the in the book, he she uses a. Uh, Bentaro's surname, Toda. Uh, but otherwise everything pretty much played out how 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 things unfolded both um, um in the source in the in the Clavel's book, but also I think pretty true to life as well as far as the uh, person, in regards to Mariko. As far as Mariko, as far as how yeah, how yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if I if I'm gonna really nitpick and overanalyze yeah. and things which sometimes I don't feel like I can with this show because 
you you I feel like you know a lot more about the history and the what happens in the book and and all that stuff. So I'm always like hesitant to say what I'm really thinking just yeah, because I'm like, well, no, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. I don't really care about that stuff. I'm just say, taking the story how I get it. But so I think where I struggle with yeah. this is that I wasn't really surprised by anything. <laughs> No, like, I wasn't. Either. I was surprised that they killed her just because but at the same time I wasn't I wasn't mad about it. It mm-hmm. wasn't like, "Oh my god, you just killed the best character on the show." That is Yabushige. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I stand by that. <laughs> no, it just made sense that yeah. that she would sacrifice herself not for love, not for anyone, anything else other than her loyalty to Toronaga and her her desire to bring some sort of um, respect back to her name after all this time. So she died exactly how she wanted to, and it and it made made complete sense. And this whole episode, all of her actions, so. In a way, with Toronaga, like he f- he's I think if we go back a few episodes and there's that conversation about Buntaro wanting to um wanting to kill Blackthorn, but he can't but he can't kill his wife and then or or but and then Toronaga says, Well then why don't you kill her? Too, because they're both guilty, and so there's this whole exchange. And then after that conversation, Toranaga essentially asks her, "Well, what she wants?" And she says, "Tells them." And I think from there, that's planted the seed of that eventually to using her in this way. Um, granted, I don't think I don't necessarily think it was fully his plan to have her die. No. <laughs> I mean, no. <laughs> but but it still works in his favor in the long run, especially probably some of the more subtle subtle parts of this that were interesting um, and just other reminders is that this this game, this pol- political game is so much more bigger than Toronaga versus Ishido because of the other councilmen who are loyal, who are Christian and loyal to the Spanish. And so you see Mariko very wisely try to pl- make pleas to these men based on their religious beliefs. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so and so I like that. I, I thought that was a clever thing to to put in there as a reminder about how like yet at the same time that that religious part of it makes all of this death and suicide very, very much harder for them to, to allow and accept and be yeah, aligned. Yeah. 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 That's, that's a good, that's a very good point. I mean, I think thinking back, you're right. I mean, that, I think for me, the death was earned, you know, that it, you're right. I mean, it, it was, it was, it was, it was building towards this. I mean, that that was sort of her. You know, she wanted to go out on, on her own terms. I mean, and and I and I and I like the way you brought the Portuguese to do with it coming back to to the bigger global picture because they saw what was going on, what, what Toronaga was was doing. Um, you know, whenever you think with the when 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 Father Lubido and the other 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 uh priests were talking i mean they were like they caught on to the ruse what what that what, what was tornaga's tornaga's plan and and so what plan his plan to leave osaka no his plan his his, his willing seemingly willingness to give up or like this doesn't this doesn't job mm because I mean, I think you know because because Martin, at least the older the older priest, Father Avito was like, well, wait a minute, Blackthorn, you know, he's you know he let him go and right, right. and yeah and, and and so I think he was still thinking like you know he was sort of like 
in the camp of where Ishida was, because you know, I think he, he was was thinking, which is, yeah, he's going to show up and he's going to he's going to surrender and you know, with the impeachment and and and, and meet his fate. But That's the others, all Ishido can do. Yeah. Like, like he he has to like one way or another, based on their culture, yeah. Tornaga is going to end up in Osaka, and Ishido knows that. It's just a matter yeah. of time and waiting. Yeah. Yeah. So, but but I don't know what Ishido's plan is for like okay when that happens, and the longer it takes him, what's what what's your plan here? <laughs> yeah, really- well, Ishido was thinking okay. You know, he was thinking the long game of well, not the long game, but he was thinking of like he he was coalescing his power because you know he proposes to Lady Oshiba. So and of course, what now was he going to do that so he could like kill the heir and and or because I mean that's typically what you know whenever you have these situations, you know if there's like the you know the the the, the heir the consort and mm-hmm. and the and the you know the Tycho's son. You know the idea would normally would would take them out, and and of course we see you know, Ishido is you know he he uses he uses Yabushige to you know to do his dirty work so he can kind of keep his hands off of it. Um, so it's not it just looks like oh you know Yabushige is the, the the willing fool who's like so busy trying to like play the angles and you know see which way the wind's blowing. So. Even though at the beginning of the episode, Yabushige is like, what's that? How dare you call him a fool? He is not a fool. <laughs> he is a survivor, okay? Yeah. The man <laughs> is just like, yeah, I I need to get on the right side of things depending yeah. on, like, he he's pretty good. But I also love, nobody's letting him in on, on their plans. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I think at the end of the day, yeah. what this episode really shows is is just how much like Mariko, Blackthorn, Yabushige, the other councilmen, all of these other people are pawns. Yeah. Like they 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 really are yeah. just pawns on this chessboard and you have two people. Now, I don't know if it's 100% Ishido because because I, I I think there's some consistency issues with his character and so I don't know if it's Ishido and Oshiba but them two versus Toronaga and how they they use these people to get what they want yeah. um, at the end of the day yeah. so um, well, yeah well I think too you know Toronaga at the end of the day he doesn't want power I mean he you know and if he just really his his mission is to make sure to follow the will of the taiku which is get my son to the age of majority so he could take over and avoid war at all costs and then you know he but he he uses ashido's ambitions against him because he knows that like if if mariko is 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 killed then all the other Regents and all the other samurai are going to rise up against him because, against Ashido, that is, because, you know, because at, at all along they've, they've he's put this ruse out there that oh no everybody here in Osaka Castle is is well is is free to go and they're not prisoners they're not hostages, but at the same time but if but if he lets everybody go if if, if Ashido lets everyone go he loses all leverage that he's that he's ma- maintained throughout this time. So, you know, so Tornaga is definitely, you know, he uses Mariko and, 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 and to your point that you, you, you raised about Mariko's pain, think, you know, things that she's carrying on as far as what she wants, you know, Tornaga smartly uses that to, to, make, to, 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 to force these events that have happened up to this point. And, and of course, you know, things do go sideways where he probably didn't foresee, but, um, but at the end of the day, I mean, he is that we're we're going to get the Tycho's will carried out as far as his son being, the, you know, the next leader and things going peacefully, you know, to, you know, to, to the to the next period in, in Japan's history. Um, were you thrown off by Ochiba in this episode? 
at all in her reaction to Mariko? Um, not, not really. I mean, I think, you know, some of the things we discussed in the, in, in the past, um, you know, I think she was pretty consistent with what, how she, how she views, views things. Um, and I, and I know she, you know, she used the ruse of wanting to talk to Blackthorn, um, to, to get those to get to, to have that conversation with, with Mariko, but, um, yeah, you know, I think it was, you know, she, she used her childhood as, as a way to maybe try to convince her to, to, to see things her way but you know i, I it, it to me it seemed consistent with what she's been doing all along yeah yeah i i just i thought she would be a little bit more mad at her considering mm. her dad killed her dad so yeah yeah <laughs> no, no that's a good point yeah no. then again she's directing all i i guess that's mainly why i felt as though it was tr- they tried to convey that both Tornaga and Mariko are allies because of Ochaba's mutual hatred for them, but it didn't seem that way. Granted, that kind of makes sense considering they grew up like sisters together. So it's yeah. just, I was I was a bit thrown by her initial reaction to Mariko um, <laughs> and her desire to what it felt like want to see Mariko live, mm-hmm. but also understanding the politics like yeah there is no alternative um but but yeah it it definitely did not set them up for success um next episode yeah but But she did seem yeah but she did seem i guess she did seem a little sad though when mark you know whenever they she basically marco was like no i'm gonna let fate my fate is is what it is uh so yeah. i guess there was there was a little bit of sadness there it felt like a plea for no you gotta you yeah. gotta choose differently you can't remain loyal to, loyal to toranaga yeah um and then the last person who we haven't really talked about at all is blackthorn yeah how well does he know japanese he seems to have picked up quite a bit. <laughs> sometimes. I mean, sometimes. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, but he did say keep it simple. And there was, you know, he, he did say still, and there's some still some phrases and stuff in, in one part of the episode. But he has, he, he ha, I guess he, he's, he's learned enough not to like inadvertently get old, old men killed. <laughs> I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, I go back and forth on how much he knows and mm. what he doesn't. But then again, just because you know the language doesn't mean dialect wise right. yeah. or even how people talk. Like languages can change based on just suddenly, oh, they're from a different region and they talk in a different way or they they mumble their words more. So it's just harder. So right. I just. I question it a bit because it seemed like in some scenes he he knew what was going on and some scenes he had no idea what was going on. And I'm just like, okay, well, they're not they don't seem to be using too hard of words. Yeah, (laughs) well, I think but also it's context clues as well. I mean, I just think about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, just think about how we may come across the language or I mean, I like for for, others just myself as an example, like in, in my house, in my own household, I mean, I don't know. I don't speak Tamil. But I've picked up a, a, enough words and phrases um, where, if my if my wife and and say or some of her if her family's here or whatever, you know I could kind of between context clues and and other things kind of pick up where they're coming from. It just a little bit of language that I have picked up. <laughs> so I think Blackthorn's done a similar thing where he's just sort of like. Like you said, some situations he does seem to know more than others. Um, and, you know, and, and I would think about the scene that he and Yabashige had together where they were like, they they they, 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 they muddled through and both of them, because I mean, yeah, you know, on the flip side, Yabashige was just like, you know, he, you know, he, he was having, he he could figure out where Black, what Blackthorn was saying to him through this, through context clues. So, uh, yeah, but you're right. I mean, uh, there's some places where it seemed to be he seemed to be better off than others. 
Well, we just also don't have um, a great perspective on the amount of time that has gone on. Like yeah. how long has Black Thorn been in Japan? This, and yeah. so so it's 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 hard. I'm I get the sense that it's been a while. Yeah. But it also feels a lot shorter just because of like how this show is broken up. So well, well, I guess we could take it by seasons because we've had Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So at least at least a year. Right. Maybe longer. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. So and 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 we'll see. We'll see. I I I do appreciate how the just how much Blackthorn he, he he's the hero, but he's not the hero. He's yeah. more of like the viewer's avatar into mm-hmm. this world because it's a Western audience for the main main part. So yeah, so it's just it it's I I appreciate how they utilized him in comparison to similar stories that we've seen in the past and how um his character type has been used. So yeah. Yeah, I will say whenever, like, whenever he stepped in, whenever uh, Marco was what was going wanted to commit seppuku, and and none of the, you know the the Christian priest, the Christian regent who said he was going would be her second didn't show up, and when Blackthorn did step up, that's I literally pointed at the screen and I was like, he gets it. He finally, you know, that's he finally, I think he finally recognized bigger context, everything what what she's been trying to to convey to him all this time and also just their and also their love for one another uh both in the in a western sense that he has for her but also in 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 a feudal japan cultural sense too that where he's like i get it and i got to step in for her to do this um i thought that was a very powerful moment in the episode as well you didn't see the cut scene where Ishido said that he was going to disrupt the ceremony and give the permit. <laughs> I missed that scene. I missed that one. <laughs> okay. Because I'm pretty sure that's what happened. <laughs> that's what happened. But prior to, but, but it, yeah, it was, now I will say if, you know, to your point about nitpicking, uh, it, it was very convenient that that's where I, yeah, I was like, oh, okay, we're, we're getting the convenience <laughs> built in. There here. were so many there's convenient some, there's some, there, things There's some plot armor that. happening here. Yeah. There were so many convenient things. I did yeah. not buy it for one second that she was actually going to end up having to do yeah. it. Yeah. Um. I was just like, oh, okay, come on, come on. Yeah. What What is What is going to conveniently disrupt this? But yeah. then it, it allows you to get to the explosion at the end. So yeah, there were yeah, yeah. The the plot armor, the plot armor was there. It's like the first set of plot armor was whenever she was trying to leave the castle. <laughs> The second was yeah the, that scene, and then the third yeah the plot armor is like okay we're taking the plot armor off, but uh, but at the end it was to me it, it was an earned death and and so, um, it you know it it, it worked. Yeah. In, her, in, her, in the in the whole context of the story. Yep, and we shall see next week if they earn their ending. Um. Or if Tornanga will earn his ending, whatever it shall be. Yeah. 